Skin color is a bit of a hot topic, but the story of why we have such a range in skin color of humans is one of the best examples of an adaptation that we have. You've probably noticed that not everyone has the same skin color. We have quite a range in humans from quite light to fairly dark. Let's first talk a little bit about the proximate mechanisms going on here. So here we're looking at a couple different layers of our skin. We have, you know, this dead cells on the top that slough off. And as you go deeper, you have more and more um, living cells. And eventually you'll get to these melanocytes, these kind of octopus looking cells. These are the cells that produce melanin, a melanin being the pigment that is responsible for the actual color of our skin. There's um, two main types of melanin. We have eumelanin and pheo or pheomelanin. I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways. Um, eumelanin is darker in color and pheomelanin, it's where this we have this kind of loss of function. It doesn't work as well, so it's this lighter color. As you can see, my skin is fairly light, so I probably produce pheomelanin, but someone with darker skin probably produces eumelanin. Um, so this is responsible for some of the different differences in color we see, but it's also like how much melanin do you produce? How densely is it packed in your skin? Um, so areas where you have a freckle or an age spot, that's where you have a little bit more melanin in that place um, than the surrounding areas. We can also look at the molecular pathway for melanin. So, you know, we create the protein, goes through some modifications, and then it's eventually um, deposited into our cells. Um, we mainly talk about the MC1R gene or the melanocortin 1 receptor. But as you can see, there is a larger pathway. So we can modify different parts of this pathway to produce um, a different effect and end pigment. So it is more than just one gene, but that is the main one we ta we're talking about when discussing skin color. Um, but even before we understood the molecular pathway for melanin, we had tools to measure and talk about um, skin color in humans. Um, the tool is called a spectrophotometer. So this um, actually uh, directs light at our skin, and then we measure what bounces back, and we call these reflectance values. Um, it's been commercialized in the past couple years by Sephora. That is their color IQ. So you can go in, they'll, you know, use the fancy machine on your skin, and then it will give you the uh, approximate Pantone shade that will match match your skin, and then they can, you know, try and sell you the foundations that match your skin the best. Um, I think it's kind of cool that we're trying to be a little bit more personalized in people's skin colors. And I have noticed in the past uh, decade that there have been more and more uh, shades offered for foundation. So the makeup world is trying to cash in on diversity. Um, there are a couple of... Uh, extreme skin colors you might notice. Um, albinos, uh, they do not produce melanin. So they have a, a disorder where for whatever reason, um, they don't produce mel melanin. It's generally a genetic disorder. Um, it's of course not unique to humans. We see albinos in um, other mammals and reptiles as well. Um, if you are albino, you need to be very careful about sun exposure because you're more susceptible to sunburn. Um, there are even a few instances of blue skin. Um, so this is primarily the Fugate family um, in Kentucky. Um, so this stems from a blood disorder of the methemoglobinemia, methanopoglobinemia, uh, or the MET-H gene. Um, so there, this particular allele is recessive, so you do need to have two copies. Um, and blue skin is a side effect. Thankfully, now it is easily treatable once we understand it. Um, but this particular family in Kentucky, um, two of the founders of this family both happen to have a recessive allele. So that's why we see a relatively high incidence of this disorder in their descendants. But we've been talking about a specific type of cause here. If you remember, there's two major types of reasoning. We have proximate and ultimate reasoning. Proximate reasoning is about the immediate cause, the how or what. These are the physiological mechanisms. And that's what we've been talking about. The ultimate reason, this is the evolutionary cause, the why. So the evolutionary reason why we have a particular physiological mechanism. So all of the things we just talked about, these are the proximate reasons for differences in human skin color. What's more exciting is to talk about the ultimate reasons or why we see this range of variation in the first place. To understand, it helps to look a little bit at the geography. So here we have a map of uh, indigenous populations and the skin color um, related to where they live in the world. And I'm 
people will be unsurprised to see that we have darker skin near the equator and then gradually out from there it gets lighter. We see a very nice cline or gradient here. And you're probably also not surprised to see that it correlates with the uh, intensity of UV radiation, basically how much sunlight an area gets. Um, there's a really wonderful paper by uh, Jablonski and Chaplin, which describes this really well. Um, but of course, the reason is why. I hear a lot of people bring up skin cancer as a pot potential reason why, but remember, skin cancer tends to happen later in life. So you've probably already had your children by the time you develop skin cancer, which means evolution doesn't care one bit. As long as you have your babies, evolution is happy. So skin cancer is not a good evolutionary reason to evolve darker skin. What we actually notice is there's another cause called folate. Folate is very, very important for the production of the fetal nervous system and also for sperm production. Um, unfortunately, if you do not have it, there's a couple of very serious um, birth defects you can have, um, such as anencephaly and spina bifida. So before you Google those birth defects, be forewarned. Like they're really nasty. So make sure you're prepared before you Google those words, okay? Just know that it's uh, folate's very important to make healthy babies. Um, and unfortunately, UV radiation degrades folate. So it is very important um, if you are a pregnant lady to protect the folate you have. And also folic acid is one of the number one supplements your doctor will tell you to take if you're pregnant. Um, so again, folate, essential to having a healthy, healthy baby. But since UV radiation destroys it, that means we're going to see selection for dark skin in high UV environments. So if you live near the equator, you're going to want to have dark skin to protect folate so you can have a healthy child. But now you might ask, okay, so we all came from Africa. Dark skin is helpful. Why do people have light skin at all? Like, why did we just not retain our dark skin? So we can go back to our map here, and again, we see this like very consistent gradient. We have darker skin near the equator, and then we gradually have lighter skin getting away from the equator. So there has to be another cause uh, for why light skin is helpful in other places. And that's where vitamin D comes in. Um, vitamin D, sometimes called the sunshine vitamin, um, it is essential for proper bone development. Um, if you don't have it, you can get rickets. Um, rickets is generally occurs if you don't have enough vitamin D while you're still developing. Um, but you can also get pelvic deformities. Um, when you're older, you'll just get, you know, osteoporosis. Um, but your bones aren't hard enough and then they'll bow and oh, it's, it, it is not fun. I do not recommend this. Um, but in contrast to folate, um, UV radiation is actually the catalyst for how we make vitamin D within our bodies. Um, so we don't get it directly from the sun. You still need precursors to vitamin D in your body. Um, but without that UV radiation, you will not be able to make it. So what we're seeing here is we are seeing opposing pressures. So in our high UV environment, your primary um, pressure is you want to protect your folate. So you'll select for darker skin. But in a low UV environment, now you need vitamin D. So you're going to select for light skin. Sure, you're going to lose some of your folate to the UV radiation, but we need to balance these opposing pressures here. Um, and here, skin color is um, an adaptation. Folate degradation is bad. Vitamin D production is good. So we with these two pressures working in opposite directions, we're going to see to balance that depending on your different environment. And that's why we see this very consistent gradient. Um, and it's not simply like we don't have two environments in the world, high UV radiation or low UV radiation. It is that gradient. So that's why our skin color matches that so well. Um, this was, has been the classic um, explanation for many years now, but there is actually additional research coming out that in general, the sun is just good for us. Um, and while vitamin D is important for a certain number of things, people are starting to wonder that maybe it's just a side effect and there's actually just more different benefits from the sun. So we notice that there's a lower risk of many uh, uh, kind of first world diseases here um, if you get regular sunshine. So you're 
for at lower risk for cancer, diabetes, obesity, obesity, osteoporosis, heart attack, stroke, depression, cognitive impairment, and autoimmune conditions if you just get a little sunshine. Um, so I highly recommend you read this article written by Outsider Magazine. It does have this kind of weird clickbait title, but the <laughs> content in it is very good. So can you explain? What are the evolutionary reasons for differences in human skin color?